As the way we consume content continues to change or evolve, smartphone manufacturers try to adapt, either by making devices that can successfully satisfy our content consumption needs, or by making those devices that can help you effectively create those content if you are a creator, or devices that can do both effectively. That is what Infinix aims to do with the Zero 30 5G. This is Infinix Zero 35G just launched in Venice. It's a phone with a 50 megapixel selfie camera that shoots videos up to 4K 60fps. Yes, it's targeted at you content creators. It is called a vlogging phone. I'm Izzy and I'm here in Venice with the Infinix Zero 30. Sorry I have to hold this, I'm not here with all my gear but content must be made. So yeah, Infinix sponsored a trip to Venice, the Venice Film Festival. Here they unveiled the Zero 30 5G. But this video is just me sharing my thoughts on the Zero 30 5G based on my experience. You are seeing this video the same time as Infinix is seeing this video, they are not seeing it before you. So let's get started with it. Now the Zero 30 5G is targeted at creators, it is called a vlogging phone. It even comes with a tripod from the package I got and I'm sure that's also going to be available for those that pre-order. So yeah, as a vlogging device and I happen to be in Venice, what better way to test its vlogging capabilities than to actually go into the streets or the city of Venice and see what its cameras can actually do. Specs wise, it has a 108 megapixel rear camera with OIS and then there is a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera. On the selfie side, it's a 50 megapixel camera and both the selfie and rear cameras can shoot videos at 4K 60 frames per second. That gives you plenty to work with if you want to shoot cinematic videos but I think what is more important is just how much of a good quality we can get from either of these cameras whether the selfie or the rear cameras because most are important for you as a creator that vlogs or as an individual that just wants to capture those nice moments. The Zero 30 is a nicely designed phone and I think there are three colors available. The Golden Har which is the one I have here and there is also the Rome Green which is a cool one which has a leather finish on the rear. The gold one has glass. And then there is the Fantasy Purple. We didn't get to have an answer with that at the launch event but I think that will be available later as a special edition. It is a solidly built device and it feels nice to hold on the hands. It's slim, lightweight and has a very nice looking curved AMOLED display with 144Hz. That's probably a dream for gamers. That is what you mostly find on gaming devices. So that is to say the Infinix Zero 30 while a phone targeted at creators, if gaming is what you want to do with it, it is probably going to handle it quite well. And it's not just because of the 144Hz refresh rate, but it is powered by Dimensity's 8020 5G chipset, which is also a powerful one. I think just somewhere close to the Dimensity 8050. There was also mention of the 030 4G, which is going to look exactly like this one, but with a lesser MediaTek Helio G99 processor and will not be able to shoot 4K 60fps, but should also have the same camera configuration. I was not able to confirm what this device will be priced at because Infinix also for some reason did not mention that at the launch but they did say it is going to be affordable, maybe it was an oversight, but I don't expect it to cost anywhere above $300, it should be a pretty affordable device. Uh, so I noticed that in Venice, uh, by the water side there are no railings, so not exactly safe for kids. For a device you intend to be using for blogging, you will probably be doing a lot of outdoors filming so the display needs to actually be bright enough and the Zero 30 gets up to 915 nits of peak brightness. It's currently hot in Venice, not very hot but it gets quite sunny and while I was outdoors capturing the city, I had no problems interacting with the device because the display was bright enough for outdoor use. So as a vlogging camera, it has some camera effects, uh, actually it has professional LUT mode, here yeah, it gives you different color profiles which you can use of them. This is one of the modes, I think this is professional. There are other modes, but I think I like this one best. But then you can only use this in 1080p, you can't do it at 4K, I think 1080p 30, you can do it at 4K 30 now, 4K 60. One thing Infinix seems to also have done very well with the Zero 30 is the fact that it manages to handle heating. So in my time outdoors filming with the device 4K 60fps, 4K 30fps, both selfie or rear cameras, I never had a point where I was worried about the device getting too hot or never did I get a warning from the camera that temperature was too high and I should stop recording. I actually had that with previous devices. When you record for too long, it gets hot and sometimes the camera tends to shut down. I found the cameras of the Zero 30 very impressive, probably the best I've seen on any Infinix phone, especially those rear cameras. The colors are so vibrant, even for videos. There's no overexposure, you get accurate colors. You actually take pictures and you love them because they come out good. I did find out that while the selfie camera looks great and is able to capture the videos that I need, 
I tend to use the rear camera more because of the vibrance. It gives me just that pop of color that I need for my videos. Of course, the selfie camera does its job, but just when you see the kind of results you get from the rear cameras, you might want to use the rear cameras more. In comparison with last year's Zero Ultra, while this still retains some of the design elements of that one in terms of having a curved display, it does not have that 200 megapixel camera which was on the Zero Ultra, but the 108 megapixel camera here does really good. The 108 megapixel rear camera gets optical image stabilization. It does well to handle videos even maybe in shaky conditions like I was on a boat and I was able to capture good footage. Although it's not as stable as I would have wanted it to be, but I think it does quite decent. There are different camera modes to help you the aim of storytelling in the best way possible. So the Zero 30 has a dual video mode, that's one of its features that further buttresses its blogging capabilities. You know, as a creator, you might have scenes where you want to be able to show your audience something and be able to connect to them at the same time. So on the right here, you can see my view from my room and you can also see me and that's the water side down there, you can see the boats passing by. It's an interesting feature, but this mode you're only able to film in 1080p 30fps. You can do 4K 16, which is, I guess, understandable because you are making use of both cameras at the same time. And the vlogging mode, you're able to change the view. There's a button here that you can use to switch sides, depending on what you're trying to do. And I think there is also another option where you are able to change, uh, have a smaller preview window, I guess. I can't do that while I've already started recording, but I can do that before I start recording. At the launch event, Infinix also put on quite a show. It was an interesting event. And I had no problems using the Zero 30 to capture some of those moments, even when the lighting conditions were not so favorable. That is to say, the Zero 30 can give you good pictures and videos even at night. Now, while the camera is the most marketed feature of this device, the Zero 30 is not all cameras. I mean, it has a powerful Dimensity 8020 processor, which will handle anything you want to throw at it. You get as much as 12 gigs of RAM, and if you are into virtual RAM, you can get it up to 21 gigs because you can extend it by 9 gig extra virtual RAM. But I think 12 gigs of RAM is plenty sufficient, and you will never really need to use that virtual RAM. It comes with 256 gigs of internal memory. It's a device with dual SIM card support, but sadly the storage is not expandable. Now for a device that is targeted at creators that can shoot videos as high as 4K 60fps, 256 gigs can get filled up quite quickly. There's probably a 512 gig option, but expandable storage would have been great. On the software side of things, we get XOS 13.1 on Android 13. And one thing I noticed, which is also in line with recent Infinix Premium devices, is there are no ads here. There's also minimal bloatware. Operating through the software is also very smooth thanks to that 144Hz refresh rate. And with the absence of ads, there are no interruptions. It's nice to see where Infinix is heading with the devices, but it still remains to be seen their commitment to software updates because in the launch event, they really did not promise Android software upgrades. Another important thing you might want to consider when it comes to using a device for content creation or content consumption or any device for that matter is the battery life. This one comes with 5000mAh battery. It can last you the whole day and even more depending on how you use it. But in my experience, I'd say it has very good battery life. The Zero 30 comes with a 68W charging brick. It supports 68W fast charging. So if you ever need to top up, you can be sure that it's going to charge really fast from 0 to 100. Another interesting thing that happened at the launch event was Infinix announcing they are working on satellite connectivity and they're hoping to start using it from next year so I think future Infinix devices will be able to use that. Similar to what Apple and I think Samsung announced recently if you find yourself in a remote location where there is no network or internet connection your phone will be able to connect to the satellite and call for help if you ever need to. I've not had plenty of time to test other aspects of this device as I really want to when it comes to using a device. I've mostly only tried out what it can do when it comes to the cameras and then a little bit of the software. I've not tried out things like gaming, so you can definitely expect a more detailed review. So that's my early review of the Infinix Zero 30 5G. Surely this is not as detailed as I intended to be, but of course, as soon as I get to Nigeria, I'll work on a more detailed review. So if you have questions about the Zero 30 5G or something you'd like to see in the review that you didn't see in this one, put that in the comments and I'll definitely work on it. So in Venice, you might be doing a lot of walking around because the boat rides are expensive right 80 euros for one trip that's like 76k in naira right for probably a walkable distance if you decide to walk the streets and not use the boat rides yeah if i fall you can't you come and rescue me now <laughs> <laughs>